Okay, so we're going to uh, move right into the meeting and we're going to start with uh, possible superintendent discipline. So I'm going to start out by saying that um, we're all here tonight because we know that um, we have an issue and that we are going to discuss it tonight and we are going to uh, try to put it to rest tonight. Um, Again, any comments that anybody would like to make during the discussion portion of the meeting, uh, again, I ask you to come to the podium, speak into the microphone, state your name. Um, we will then uh, have our, our, well, as the motion before there's any discussion, and then we will uh, call for discussion, and then we'll go from there. Uh, again, I need people to be civil and respectful, and uh, we really need to stay on topic and not try to throw in the kitchen sink. So, all right. So, I guess we're going to start by talking about the reason we're here is the, um, is the plagiarism item in the Florence uh, newspaper. You can't hear me? No? Gary? <laughs> Can we turn it down a little bit? Thank you. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I'll try to hold it back so we're not feeling too bad. Um, so I've got items of plagiarism in the stock and view newspaper. Uh, we know that this has occurred. We know that there's more than one incident. So we are not going to uh, nitpick through every article that everybody may have found in the, uh, in, on the internet. We are going to concede the point that it happened and it's there. Um, so, with that said, we are going to uh, start with um, a motion from Mr. Finley, I believe. Okay. I got this. All right, I want to make a motion to initiate a termination of job hearing in regards to our superintendent, John D. I'll second. All right, so now we're at the discussion, and did everybody hear the motion? No. Okay, the motion is to initiate a termination hearing for Mr. McGee. And Mr. Finley made that motion, and Mr. Greger has seconded the motion. So now we're at discussion. So I'm going to start with uh, those of us here at the table, and then we will have it open for other folks. Other folks. So this is Cornish. How about we start it? Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <clears throat> uh, in consideration of what we're meeting with tonight, I of course was disappointed uh, with, with what has happened with Mr. McGee, but in the seven and a half years that I've worked with Mr. McGee, I have felt nothing but uh, admiration for his ability as a superintendent. Um, I applied with my own children and one of the things that's a rule in our house is that we talk about having a savings account when we deal with one another. And I always tell my kids that you better make sure there's enough money or enough good things in your savings account that when you have to make a withdrawal from there, that it's not going to bankrupt you. Now, I don't know if you understand my point, but my point is that in the seven and a half years that I've worked with Mr. McGee, he has more than still the savings account for me. And as I was thinking about some of the things that he has accomplished for us, initiated for us as a board to be a better board, um, I wrote some of these things down and I hope that you will bear with me because it's a fairly long list of things that he has accomplished or helped us, helped us accomplish while he has been the superintendent here in Florida. I'm going to start with school finance. When he came on reserve, and for those of you that don't that might not be aware of this, the state would like for every public school 
to have 10% of its general fund in reserve. So that if something happens uh, somewhere along the line, that you have a savings account basically to cover that. And when this interview came, we had about 5% five, five um, of our general budget was in reserve. And that has been raised to about almost 9% now in the last seven and a half years that you've been here. When you came, our accounting software that we had was fairly old and out of date, and he initiated a, a new software program for us for, to take over. He's also done that with uh, the accounting system for our student activities. Um, he's, he has initiated and worked in conjunction with a number of grants that have brought more than, well, I wouldn't say more than, almost a million dollars into our school district. Uh, he's worked with Mr. DeGrito on the safe routes for school grants, and that's what you see that's been responsible for the sidewalk and, you know, to the park, the safety of our students. Um, and that grant was over $200,000. Um, there's a Valentine's grant, and that's a grant that's offered here in the Valley, and that's about $25,000 $25, yearly. That's, that's coming to our school district. Um, we have a quality school grant. Um, I'm not sure of the money on that. I couldn't remember what that was. Then we have a Quick Start Energy Project um, grant. This was several years ago, and Florence obtained one of the highest um, payouts in that grant. We, we received $430,000 to update um, the, infra the infrastructure of our energy within our school. Um, he is also, for, you know, in many schools they have to hire uh, a negotiator when it comes time to deal with our um, certified and, and classified staff. And he, um, because of his experience and expertise, has been able to negotiate with two members from the board, with our staff, saving us um, thousands of dollars because when you have to hire an independent negotiator to come in, you're looking at probably a minimum of $5,000. I'm going to move on to the school program. He has been very involved in updating and, and, and keeping our curriculum in, in, in case with, um, with other schools and with the nation and with the nation. We've had an AP classes. He's been a proponent of as small classes as, as we can um, have in our middle school, especially classes in the elementary. Um, he has just implemented the, um, the, the ALEX program for math. And there's been quite a bit of discussion about that at, current, at, at recent meetings. He's also implemented the next year program for reading. Um, he continues to, to support improvement on all three hill levels and he was very involved in, uh, in finding money to upgrade the books in our library. <laughs> um, school maintenance. He, um, several years ago, we changed uh, our custodial program. We had privately contracted with another um, agency, and they, when, when they came back with their, with their um, contract to us, they had raised that considerably, so Mr. McGee suggested that we go back to hiring our own private custodial staff and has been involved in doing that and keeping on top of that. We have new lockers, we have new bleachers here in the old gym, um, we've uh, installed a, a brand new ADA compliant ramp for any, any special needs that's in the back of our building, and if, if any of you have not seen that, you need to. We should have had a before and after picture because it's, it's just really incredible. That will come through a grant also, and that was over $200,000. Um, we've replaced the football scoreboard, new lights installed in the gym, new sound system in the gym. And we've, it's a continual upgrade of our sewer system, I'm sure you're all aware of pretty much that that's a continual upgrade. And then we had, and then we had an upgrade of our, drinking, or, of our drinking water system that uh, was implemented a couple of years ago, I think. Um, facility improvement. Uh, and these are things, I think, that when somebody drives by the school, they're not going to see or, or, or appreciate 
unless you um, have had somebody tell you. I mean, every year, um, because of its budgeting ability, we are able to put in some rooms carpet, paint, um, we've remodeled the elementary bathroom, there have been new tables in the pavilion, we've had to replace the hot water heater in our kitchen and our locker room, we've got a new roof on our building, we've had a new, we have a new storage for of um, chefs or equipment, we've got sprinkling systems, um, new lunch tables, we have to, we've had to install a new fire alarm system, that was several years ago, that was one of the first things that he was, that he had to initiate, new sidewalks, and then we've got paved parking lots that we've never had before. Um, our staff concerns, I mean he has tried to work very hard in our budget to keep to keep the teachers that we have here, um, he's, he's replaced. He's helped us replace surveillance cameras. Implemented um, the ability to, to when, you, when you're calling every morning for substitutes, we have a new program that is an automatic calling system. He's done the same thing with the, with the school reach notification pro program, which I think parents have very much appreciated. Um, we have phones installed in the gym now for safety reasons. Um, we have swipe card, a swipe card system for our staff. Um, he's helped us replace outdated equipment. Um, we have new fencing around the school that was a safety issue and, and our softball field. Technology improvements. Almost every teacher in our system has a Promethean board. For so those of you that might not understand what that is, it's, um, it's a great big iPad is really what it is. I guess that's the best way for it somebody who's not very technical to explain that, which has been a great, a great um, thing for our teachers. He's, he's, he's initiated by new computers every three years. He has totally upgraded our computer system, our network, our wireless network, installed fiber optics, and installed a DVR system into our new gym. Um, those are just some of the things I think that people might not be aware of that have happened within our school districts in the last seven and a half years. I've lived in this school district for 40 years, and I can tell you we've had more upgrades on our old building in the last seven and a half years than we have had previously in the last 20. I mean, since we actually remodeled, which was 20 years ago, because we just paid off our, our last, uh, the bond on the map. Um, the other thing I'm really proud of that, that I think comes you know, comes from good leadership in our in our district is that last year we found out that we have the highest extracurricular GPA of all class two schools. Um, we have the lowest dropout rate for all schools in the Valley County. Um, the technology has improved so much that we're one of the schools that people look to for our network. Um, we've made such improvements in student safety with the crosswalks and parking lots, and in, in the last eight years we've been able to surpass three general elections, general fund elections, or levies, not elections, general fund levies that have helped finance our district. Um, because of those things, I, I am in support of Mr. McGee, and I know that he has, as we all have, looked at a, a, a mistake that was made and um, are going to make corrections for that, and there will be some discipline that's going to fall tonight. But I am still in support to Mr. McGee for our season tax. I'm in support of Mrs. Rosen's next I don't have a sincere statement, but I do want you to know that I believe in John. <laughs> Uh, I believe John is a very character giving man and he's a, a man of honor and a man of And I believe this to be a lack of judgment or a stupid mistake, if you want to call that. But I worked with the district for 25 years. And my job was a newsletter. And the newsletter, when I first started off, 
the law had to be approved by the Supreme Everything was written to the library before printing and sent out. And as time went by, and I gave instructions to the Superintendent, it got to a point that he didn't see it until it came back from printing. I knew about the copyright stuff. I watched for it. I hope I never made a mistake about something we want. In this case, because of my experience in working here, I would say a lot of it is a clerical error. But it's John will say it's an error ultimately because he should have caused and that so it kind of a double mistake. It was I think when the newsletter was put together, the stuff that was put in it, it was ready to go. And he trusted that it was all right. So usually the superintendency that comes back, they trust that their staff could have been right. And errors do happen. But I I stand behind John because I know him well. I believe that he's honorable now because from a family, an honorable family that I know. He's a, he's a member of our community. He wants to live here and be a part of it. And I agree there has to be some discipline. But I think with what we do here, <clears throat> do here tonight and what he's already gone through, I think that he's paid the price for it. And I think they have to understand that everybody does make mistakes. It's just a lot of us, when we make a mistake, it's not out in front of the public. And we've all done, done dumb things, but we just don't get caught. And a lot of that is, it's not the people that are doing it, it's just the ones that get caught and what you hear about. And when you're a public figure, when you're superintendent of education here in Florida, then you, you are a higher standard. And so if you make a mistake, it's a lot more serious. But I, I do support John. I, I'm not go, going through this with my eyes shut. I know the air, and I still go with John. I think with the discipline that we put on this meeting tonight, I think he's paid enough. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Kelly, I'd like to see, would you like to go now? Sure. Well, I'm sorry to say that it doesn't happen to John. It is, it's an absolutely Terrible thing is very easy to avoid. And it does uh, what it does. Unless we hold, hold them accountable, it will lower our standards, I think. There should be, we need to maintain our standards here at this school. There should be some consequences for this kind of stuff. Pretty serious consequences. I might be a little, a little hard going, but. Uh, that's just the way I feel. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Mr. Kenny and Mr. Berger. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, you know, I'm talking to the board and the audience here, and um, I do not support termination, and uh, here's my reasons why. Um, I'm glad that you had that long with us because that. Uh, means I don't have to speak law. But um, the one thing I'd like the board to consider is we've done evaluations, uh, annual evaluations, and we look at what I consider to be essential functions for the job of the superintendent. And on most of the evaluation categories, um, Mr. McGee has uh, rated as, as being fairly high. Uh, I'm probably one of the harshest on those evaluations, I think. The scores I get are maybe lower than, than what the average usually is. I probably drag the average down because I am fairly critical. But um, that being said, the um, the ratings have been high, 
Um, and, and they're high because of reasons uh, that Vicki and Dorothy have, have talked about. Uh, you know, the, the school funding, the improvements. Um, uh, each, each year, the school continues to get uh, uh, the, the structure of the facility gets better. Um, the, you, know, you can see it in the parking lot, you can see it in the ramp. Um, that doesn't happen by accident. That's, that's from good management uh, of, our, of our general fund. Um, also, we've had financial audits that have, have been very good. There's been minor issues with those audits that we can take care of. Uh, fairly quickly, and so that's something else I appreciate. I, I feel like, um, well, another thing too is that I want to mention is, um, you know, there's future improvements. There's a, we've had academic improvements throughout the years as well. You know, since, you know, especially, you know, I pay attention now when I'm on the board and I've had kids at school. Um, as well as I, I do know the future improvements that are currently being worked on, and I, I think are, are very important to keep going. Um, now, I think plagiarism, this plagiarism uh, in incident uh, has definitely overshadowed the, uh, the excellent results uh, and does definitely deserve uh, discipline, but I don't believe it deserves termination. Um, I, I don't think plagiarism like this falls in the same category as a termination category. And when I'm, when I'm thinking of termination, I'm thinking of uh, more serious offenses like breaking the law, you know, having DUIs, uh, fraud, stealing, you know, inappropriate relations. We see that all the time around the country, and, and a lot of times that that ends up being passed over. I think this is this is taken much more um, seriousness than than those things. Although I think those are termination categories. So, um, and, and the other thing that's coming out of this. I know it's extremely hard for John. It's extremely hard for I think the whole district. Um, but I believe the students are also seeing firsthand um, the consequences of one's actions. Um, I guarantee you know before this whole thing, and I'm done, I'm not making this an excuse for doing it. It's not this isn't the reason why. But students are seeing the consequences that John has had to go through with his family. Um, and, and so I, I think there is there is a, an unexpected positive that comes out of us, um, and, and I don't believe you know with discipline. I don't believe termination is necessary, and that's what I'm uh, trying to convince the board. Thank you. Okay, um, I would like to thank the go last. So we'll start with audience members who might want to come to the podium and identify themselves and speak. Hi, my name is Lena Nichols, and I've been in this yeah. in the district uh, this time for 12 years. Um, and I agree all the things that he's done, but I also agree he's getting paid to do this. If he didn't get a paycheck, this all this stuff wouldn't have been done. Or our citizens here didn't vote for the tax eleven, who didn't have a lot of the money that's there. Termination? Yes, yeah, a hard thing to do. But I really believe the other point, termination is going to be for the best. I guess I'm from the old school. Oh, I'm sorry. Please, please stay your name again. I am a state McCracken. I've lived in the Clark area for about 35 years. I've got six grandchildren graduating from school with, with good education. Can you speak a little closer to the mic, please? I have my six grandchildren have six of my grandchildren have gone through this school and they've all received just good education. They've all gone out of college and are now pursuing their careers and whatever whatever they chose to do. You know, I I don't need to get involved in school politics. I'm one of the silent the silent majority that spreads this bad and these that out to the people that we that we vote yet to do that. Uh, <laughs> I recently had a nice experience of returning from the state basketball tournament in Butte. 
And first thing I thought was that our soul was one of the only two that had both their own team and going to the qualified state. Both of them recommended it very well. Our band and drum uh, line were excellent as we were true. And I realized that that came from training, good training, and coaching in the school. I was really proud that I could play with some sport. I also know that our children were very previous, considered brothers, and were excellent. Uh, you know, they, that they really had good sportsmanship. The nice thing about the younger, especially teenagers who act this way, I immediately chalk about to good leadership. That leadership comes from the teachers, the advisors, the coaches, and the administrators all the way up to the top. And I can say that you should be proud of the young people that you are turning out of the school. They are fine young people. You know, one of the best of the case you make mistakes. I'd like to say that I never made one, but that does not be true. If there's anyone here who has, if I, if I have made a mistake and I have made any, it was not an intentional mistake. If there's anyone in this room who has never made a mistake, I do really advise you. It has to be very difficult to be perfect. But occasions like this happen, I often think of her to the Bible. The it seems that there was a very angry group in the gathering and they had their attention was the stone of that woman to death because of the mistakes that she had made. That is when Jesus stepped up and said, and I said that right here, let me who is without sin cast a first stone. I'll be you know the dead silence of that crowd as each one looked at the other to see who was going to admit. With the other people's face. The crowd dissipated, not like a stone was thrown. You know what I said? I had to take James' version of the Bible, John chapter 8, verse 7. There are so many problems in the world today that it seems to me we can better use our time and energy pursuing things that really are affecting us, that really need to be taken care of. Let's not make an offer of the whole gift. If we set ourselves up to judge a man, then we should first know all the good that he has done for the school and for the community. And um, then we should on the other side now stop with the mistakes that he made that he had been in the tolerance for. All I'm going to say is if it gets broken, don't try to fix it. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Emma. Good evening. My name is David McCann. I live up on Cooney Ridge, Florence. I have four children who two have gone through the school previously, D E C A N Catholic C. My two sons are now on the University of Montana with biology students, and they're doing well. I'm thankful to God for that. And I have two additional students here at the school. I have a middle schooler and I have a high school. And I'm also thankful that they are doing extremely well um, at uh, Florence. And the reason we came to Florence originally many years ago was because of the reputation of the school. And we believe that that will continue under the current superintendent's tenure here. I guess I have a couple of questions um, that I want to ask the board. Um, first of all, has, has Mr. McGee apologized and taken responsibility for his discrepancy? 
uh, and the board uh, has disciplined him in the past for those discrepancies. Is that not true? They have discipline. They have levied out some disciplines for Mr. McGee to accomplish. Has Mr. McGee accomplished those disciplines? Has he not spoken to 250 high school students and English classes stood before 16, 17, and 18 year olds and told them what he did and why it was wrong? Has he not done that? I have just my understanding he has. My daughters were part of that. Um, has Mr. McGee written a letter to the person uh, that he took the article from that was in the most recent, uh, telling him of his discretion and um, asking his forgiveness for that discretion? It seems to me when you look at the actions of the board as it relates to Mr. McGee and his leadership, that John McGee has attempted to do all that was asked of him in his discretion. I don't know that there's any more that you can ask of a man except that he be submitted to the authority that God and our country has put before him. We are all called to submit to authority. There's always somebody higher. And it seems to me, in my looking and examining this case, that Mr. McGee has attempted to right the wrong that he did. He doesn't make the wrong right, but he's attempted to make it right. And so, when we sit around our table, our dinner table, and I, the two boys in, in their in their own home, they never come home anymore. It's terrible. Twenty minutes away. But when the girls are home, and we talk about, and we talk about, they don't they don't come forward and question um, what they're going to do in the future as it relates to this. Is what comes out of our up at our table is that there was a man who made a, an egregious error. A mistake, but was man enough to stand up and bear up under it. And for them, that sets an example for them, an example that I want them to exude in their life, which is one of taking responsibility for your actions, but then going forward to make them right and to make sure you don't fall into that same error again. I am, while I'm, I, I, feel terrible for what John has gone through. He brought it on himself. We all know that he brought it on himself. He just, I just don't think he was thinking. When I did some research on um, web plagiarism just the other night, one of the things that I found was that there is an understanding, an incorrect understanding in, in our communities that to take and borrow things from the internet is okay. That that's something that's somewhat acceptable. In reality, when you look at Kate Turabian's book on how to write research and thesis and dissertations, one of the things you find is that it's not acceptable and that we must give credit for everything. But there is this pervasive understanding that you can do this, and it's wrong. And I think we found out here that it is wrong, and the example has been set for our children for the future that that is wrong and that they can't do that. And so I'm, I will close with this. I, I would encourage the board to encourage Mr. McGee, if he survives this, and I hope he does, to continue to write for the Falcon View. Mr. McGee is not a great writer. I don't think we hired him for his writing ability. I think we hired him and he has proven out his administrative and his management ability, his operations leadership, and how he's led the school. And it is for those reasons that I think he needs to be maintained in this position because I am concerned with who's going to come and replace Mr. McGee. I mean, let's, let's be real. We're Florence. And we don't have the ability to draw some of the big names like Missoula. Whether we even want those names here, I don't know. One of the great things about John McGee is he lives in the community. He's part of it. And I don't think we do this to people who are a part of our community. I think we, we expect good from them. But when they fail and they're, take, they're willing to take responsibility, we gather around them and we support them and encourage them. And so I close with that and just to say that let him who was out was without sin cast the first stone. We are all men and women who falter and fail. And we will continue. And I hope that grace 
will be given to me when I fail. The same amount of grace will be given to Mr. McGee. Grace, unmerited favor, what you don't deserve, but you're given out of love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jim Street. I served on this board from 2007 to 2010. Some of the problems that we were playing for when I served on the board with a few other members still continue for here, haven't been taken care of. And uh, I respect these people's position. I do have a very hard position. Nobody agrees with you all the time. We got to make the right decision as a board member. Um, I have a lot of respect for Mel Finland this evening. Um, he come up forward. He's the oldest person responsible, I feel, for, the, for what he committed. It should be. It's, it's not. Look it up in a dictionary. It's sex, people. It's sex. Okay? Our superintendent committed sex. Okay, look it up in a dictionary. What are we going to do to a student at our school when we get him still money in the locker room and he says, I'm sorry? We just get slap his hand and say, we'll apologize when we took the money from and let him continue? It's all right. Excuse me. You need to speak to us. You need to speak to us. Okay, one thing you never put him Okay? And also, uh, I'd like to address Dixie's comment of all the things that have been done. The people that deserve the credit for what she brought up, more than anybody, for the community members, the people that made it back to this community. This is a business that's not here in Florence the school. It's not a good boys club. I'll tell you, if I had an employee, I own a local business that sold for me, there wouldn't be two seconds before he'd be fired. So I want the board to think about that, what actually happened. And we, we deserve better respect for that with the money that we're giving to the school and all the mill levies that have come since it's been here for seven years. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. My name is Eric Rolf Sheldon. Uh, Mike and I moved here in 1988. And uh, this will be our 16th year to have a kid go through this school. And so, thank God we're going to be up the next year. We're looking forward to that. Um, I first met John. Uh, we were doing pub stops together. Met him down at the Chief Looking Glass uh, campground. And I was in a, kind of a cheer of the pub stops at the time. And we were having issues with the gym. Uh, uh, gym time because there's so many activities going on in here. Uh, within the week, he had our issues solved, and I thought, boy, this guy is a different kind of guy. He's actually getting something done. When you have guys that can do that for you, when you have doers that, that accomplish tasks, that can build the, the kind of building, build the kind of futures for these kids that we need, those are the kind of people you want to hang on to. So, really, what I want to just, uh, you know, tell you that Vicky's list uh, was tremendous. And we've all seen, I've been here for 16 years. I've seen the improvements. I've seen the score. I've seen the technology. It's real. And it's been fantastic. My daughter graduated from here as a senior three and a half years ago. She took so many AP classes. She graduated from the University of Montana in three and a half years. So somewhere, somehow, that took some leadership to get those extra AP classes in. And so, I guess I, I, I don't come before me very often, but, um, you know, I really would like the board to get back to focusing on academics instead of politics. Um, we just had a beautiful prom this last week. The basketball team is very, very well. Where is the, the positives in the talk here? I'd like to see that instead of some of the negative in the paper. This school has a lot to offer. When you take a look at the body of leadership of John McGee, it's 99 And so if you're going to sit back and judge somebody, you better take a look at all the good things that he's done, as well as maybe the air. And so everyone makes it. And so look in your own house before you take, it, take up that judgment. And so again, thank you, John, for all you've done. And, and Cup Scouts, Boy Scouts, baseball, softball, all the things we've done together over the years. It's been fantastic. So, thank you.
My name is Kevin O'Brien. I'm the staff trustee from 2006-2009. And I can't say that there was a lot of positives that went on in that time with me as a trustee or with the business of the district. And tonight I'd like to talk about the business of the district. Uh, Chairperson Appleby, was there a meeting on January 23rd where the board addressed uh, an act of plagiarism by the superintendent? Uh, we're going to do a question and Well, we're talking about action. There was already something that went on in a closed session. On the 23rd, we handled certificate personnel review. Okay, uh, I think that happened, and we are not going to discuss back and forth what. <coughs> Okay. 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 Statements in that statement that came out of that meeting in the Revelry Project stated that the board didn't require Mr. McGee to write the policy to Mr. Robert Bosa. Also, that the board wanted Mr. McGee to talk to the students to apologize for the actions. Policy number 1400 in your school policy manual. The very last sentence, policy 1400. No formal action shall take place during executive session. The board wrote that policy. Also, policy 1400. This meeting was asked for over a month ago. In policy 1400, the chair has the right as an individual to call for a special meeting without a meeting being held. The chair has the right to ask for that. Also, two other board members also have the right to ask for that. It doesn't take a board meeting to call a special meeting. There's a list of 12 policies that were broken with the act of plagiarism and the act that falls by the board. I'm only going to read one. Policy 6110. Policy 6110 is superintendent's qualification. And I'm just going to read One line in that. Sorry about the delay, folks. Qualifications and appointment for the superintendent. The superintendent must be of a good character and an unquestionable moral and integrity. He has failed that in your policy manual. And if you're not going to follow the policy manual, please don't expect your children to follow. Thank you. My name is Silva Hester. Can anybody down here hear me? Just to hear what I'm saying. Because I had a terrible time trying to understand what people were saying. His microphone is facing here. This is a school board that has a tremendous responsibility. Yeah. There we go. A school board that has a tremendous responsibility. Unpleasant. You worked with John McGee for years. You obviously respect him. Unfortunately, by an accident, some students got a hold of a computer program and identified some of the content of an article that you wrote, John, and they identified it as having been written by somebody else. When I first heard that, I accepted your explanation that it was an accident, that you were pressed for time, that you saw your name on that article, that there wasn't time to change it. And I believe that explanation. It seemed like it was a mistake that anybody could make. And certainly I believe my share. But then what happened was 
much to your surprise, I'm sure, and much to my surprise, several more articles were identified. And that same pattern was established. You were taking other people's work and passing it off as your own. The word is plagiarism. And you know, and I know, that in academic circles, that is one of the cardinal sins. When that additional plagiarism was identified, what it did was it made that first explanation of yours, in my opinion, an absolute lie. You used that explanation to be so plausible, but on reflection, it was not true. You have been, over a long period of time, I would imagine, doing this and getting by with it. You did not recognize that somebody, some small student in a laboratory, got a hold of a computer program and uncovered the serial plagiarism that you have been responsible for. Now, I feel that listening to the board, that it's going to be a four to one vote to retain you. I think that's a reflection on the thinking of these board members. And I think it's a terrible mistake. I think that you know, and I know, that what you have done is not only wrong, but it would be cause for dismissal dismissal in virtually every university that I'm aware of. Certainly at Annapolis and at West Point, you would be gone. I'm sorry the board has made the decision it has. It's nothing personal. You made a mistake, and you should be dismissed. And Mel Finley, I know he likes you, he respects you, but he's made that same judgment that you should be dismissed. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going to ask everyone who continues to speak to please speak directly to the board, not to the audience, not directly to Mr. McGee. Your remarks are to us at the board. And uh, I ask the audience to uh, be more respectful. And if you can't be more respectful, I'm going to ask you to leave. Okay? No applause, no cheering, no disrespect. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, my name is. So long. Uh, my name is Steve Damron. Uh, I got a letter from my son. Can't hear you. Okay. Uh, my name is Susan Danon. I have a letter from my son who is in uh, Pine Hills right now. Um, and he has heard about this and he asked me to address his letter and I'd like to read it to him. This is on the matter of Mr. Superintendent Mr. McGee. I'd like to point out a few things that might aid you in your passing of any sort of judgment. Number one, as a committee, you denied me a right to public education, regardless of my education in the future. You thought of only yourselves. Number two, given this speech, you justified your decisions based on wanting to face the consequences of my actions. Now I'm in Pine Hill and doing just that. Three, it has come to my attention that Mr. McGee has been caught uh, for plagiarism. The act of stealing, whether it be cigarettes or words of another, is simply wrong. You've shown me, as a 15 year old, that you couldn't forgive a kid for his actions, so how could you forgive an adult? I have learned that just because a person is in a position of power does not mean he or she is correct in their ways. It also does not mean that he or she should be treated any differently than you are. No matter what the crime is, it is still wrong, and you should go, it should not go unpunished. If an apology from someone who did something that wasn't at the school or didn't affect anyone at the school 
isn't enough. Is it logical to accept an apology from somebody who knew full well what they were doing and the people he was representing? Now I'd like to read what I have. Um, Mr. McGee, you told my son that he must accept responsibility for his actions, and he did just that. My son apologized, he went to court, and he was sentenced. My son asked to come back to school, and was not allowed to go to school. Okay. Um, they put him in a digital cannabis. When his grades went to drop, he had, we asked for help as a family. We weren't given that help. We were told by Mr. McGee, when my son has trouble understanding his work, I make him sit there until he gets it, which is fine. Where was that mobility when you were copying the other's work, claiming it to be your own? When my son came to the school board, and we asked the school board for the same meeting, sorry about that, Melody told my son that there was a student in the school with sensibility. He said you would be remiss in your duty if you didn't protect those sensibilities. Where's those values protecting those sensibilities for that student now? Vic, even though my son was sent by the court, you told my family that the community had a right to punish him for his crime. Where's that right for the community now? Pat. You said in the Zulian article that we need to forgive. Where's that forgiveness when we ask for it? You expect mercy and forgiveness when it's you and your friends are caught doing something wrong, but not for others. I sat here and listened, and as Vicki and, and Dorothy stated, that, that an honest mistake is an honest mistake. Well, other people make mistakes. You don't have to seem to have the same judgment for them as you do for John. And I would like to read a few words that I wrote down here in conclusion. It says, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. And watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Mark Gilbert. I've been here approximately about 50 years. I've always supported the school. We have reached each point. But first of all, no one has mentioned our school is in. When we had an 8.5 to 9 million budget, our payroll is probably 85 to 90 percent of that, which is taxpayer money. And big business is special. And anyone in big business can be taxed in business if this happens. And we all did it. We weren't so friendship for This is business. It's big money. And the board needs to hold their integrity of credibility. And our school as a president doesn't have integrity. The leader of our school has the highest integrity, which is my opinion only, but it's my opinion, which I tell everybody. And, uh, and what really surprised me, and I don't know many teachers union members are here, but I was surprised the teachers' union didn't come out with a no vote, no confidence for our superintendent. And then I got to thinking, a top principal has told me about the good old boy father in our school. And I'm sure probably 75% of the teachers would like to do that. But the good old club is probably held up from doing that. And I would love to talk to the teacher to me because I would accuse them of this. Because the good old boy, and I had to talk to John two months after he became superintendent. And I told John, the good old boys are going to try to run the school for me. And I think they accomplished that. I do, because there hasn't been any other. They all like John really well because. 
everything all is going on for that. But just remember, you gotta look at yourself in the mirror tomorrow. And you gotta you gotta go this door with taking. And taking is honesty to yourself, first of all. And remember, this is business, not a friendship for. Thank you. For the record, my name is Kristen Page Nye, and I have two students here in the Florence School District, and I um, live on Orr Way Drive. Um, I want to start out by saying I used to be a John McGee hater. I really did. Um, I think you're eight years ago. I mean, I've been talking with the community and told that many a time. Uh, and I hated Mr. McGee because I didn't agree with his and his wife and mom something in our in our neighborhood. And uh, he has a nurse. <laughs> and over time, I have actually learned to appreciate Mr. McGee's ability to disagree with people. And his ability to deal with hot guys like myself. Because I know I am. I've matured over the years, but I'm still a little bit of a hot guy. Um, but he, he gained my trust over time because many times he did with me. And it wasn't that he was just trying to pass me off and, and agree that it was that he, he was a leader and could explain why he did things the way he did and why the board ran the way he did. And that's leadership. Sure, it absolutely takes community to get all those things done. But it takes a leader to make sure that those things happen. I guarantee, if you did not have the leadership in that office and the team that worked so well, the principal, and the other staff, that, that list would not have happened. The other, through, through the, the past eight years that I've seen too, is I started to really look at who I was joining with the John E. Hughes. I looked at who was actually doing things at the school. Who was getting the job done? It was so good. Still is it. What they bring to our community, and I want you all the subsidies to really think about this when you make this very hard decision on somebody's life, somebody's career. The lead on Yes, he absolutely has made terrible mistakes here. And I do consider it serious, but quite a bit. Absolutely. But I don't see the humility of this man. Can you imagine going in front of all of those students and explaining? Not only that you screwed up multiple times, but what it does to your kid. The kid that in school with all of these kids. What it does to your family. That's leadership. And if you plagiarize it again, absolutely. The writing is on the wall. I think John wants that. But this is his opportunity for us to show when we do make mistakes and great mistakes of that, that we give second chances. And look at the haters. Look at the signs in our community. The fire where he signs left in a block away from his kids' home. Look. I mean, when I was working on the whole levy to help pass it, I'm actually afraid to say that because I might get my tires flushed. 
There are people who would not help out because they were afraid of the haters. My name is Mark Thompson. Um, I've been a three fifths to school here once graduated, once going to be graduating this year. And I agree with what the young lady just said here. I don't know John McKee all that well personally. And it's not about um, my personal feelings towards John McKee, it's about the principal involved. Plagiarism is plagiarism. That's Steve. Um, and she's very right. This young lady is very right. What are we teaching our kids if we're going to allow this to happen in our school? Um, if we allow this to happen, I say shame on the board for letting this go on. I'm just not having my kids go to school here with this kind of thing going on. I have an 11 year old kid coming home and questioning what the definition and, and what it all means. Slavery, um, you know, it's just wrong. He is the leader of our school, and he should set a better example than that. I'm just making a short suit. So, what would you like to say? Um, my name is Christina Graff. Just to talk, pick the microphone up and talk right into it. Um, my name is Christina Graff, and um, we have been a member of the Fox community since 2009. We originally came here from Washington, and um, I did a lot of research on the school. I did a lot of research on the school before we moved here. I chose the school to the Office of Public Instruction. I checked out our school board graduation rates. I checked out um, student teacher ratios. Um, I really did my homework. And when we first came to the school, I have to say I was far from excited. Um, I know in small towns there's not as many tax dollars and whatnot to support, you know, more teachers and different classes and whatnot that are available for our students. Um, but what I didn't expect was to be walking down halls and hearing at this and at that in front of the teachers and whatnot, and everybody seemed to live used to it. Our students, from kindergarten to seniors, all ride the same bus. Our children that are in high school should be held to a higher standard because they are role models for our younger students that are up and coming students. That type of program starts with zero problems from kindergarten up. And that's how we teach our kids. And you don't see any notes from anything like that for about six years. Because it takes time for those young kids that were in that program to start role modeling for their younger ones. And that's what we've always taught our kids, that myself and my husband, we are our role models for our children. So if we do something, how are we to tell our children that they are not allowed to do it? Um, the first board meeting I went to, I won't name the staff member, but I was told that it was because of outsiders like me why we have a problem here in Florida. That was in May of 2009, and it was over the court of the very um, situation. And I tried to talk to some other parents, and at the time I was told, don't even bother getting involved, because this will be targeted, and they will be ostracized, and they will pay the price for it. And you know what? After talking to lots of parents, I believe them. So I stepped out and figured, you know what? I think the great kids, they don't have any problems. But their problem is that they have to put up with the other kids. So they talk. Um, the reason why I'm going through all this analogy is, is that as administrators and parents, we are role models for our children on um, what is acceptable and what is not. And when we do make a mistake, what the consequences are. Um, to date, our children have seen Mr. McGee come into the classroom and cry in front of them, and which originally um, our son went into class thinking he was going to have you know, questions for McGee and ask him you know, how it happened, what, you know, how did the situation occur, to somehow try to little, you know, find out how the mistake occurred. And as soon as he you know, started speaking with Mr. McGee, 
and start crying, he felt guilty. And Michelle shouldn't have to feel guilty for wanting to ask questions in regards to accountability. And when it comes down to accountability, one article is one thing, but the first article that came out, that was supposed to make us as a community feel more secure and feel safer after the shootings in Connecticut. That was the first article that was found, and it was it was plagiarized verbatim word for word. And you have a student that's here at the school, and you couldn't find heartfelt words that would tell us as a community that, you know, we're looking into this and we're doing that to make us feel better. That's what, that's what hurt me. The plagiarism now that was bad, but it was the article that was bad, you know. That that particular article was not heartfelt and didn't come from you being a parent to a student here at Florence. So, I mean, that really, I mean, it's probably the kid in the gut, I have to tell you. And that also bothered the kids because our kids, the last two days before Christmas break, didn't want to go to school because they didn't feel safe. I mean, we here in Ravalli County do not even have our own SWAT team. If something occurred at the school, heaven only knows how long it would take for somebody to get here. And we we'll usually only have two sheriffs on duty at any given time. So if anything happened in, at our school, heaven forbid, there would be major consequences. So that was supposed to make us feel safer. But that was the first article, you know. And you knew and were saying about them saying that you felt like there were people in the community that had an act to write against you. And, you know, once an article like this was found, what did you think that they were going to do? I mean, of course, they're going to start digging because they knew you did it once. I mean, if somebody's going to do it once, I mean, who knows? Maybe they've done it twice, two, three times. And that's the snowball that happened. And lo and behold, we find out that the first time they displayed drive was back in 2010. And that was the article called Team Friends by John C. B. It was taken from Office Dynamics Admit and Infinite Administrator's website. So I don't know if you're Ms. Grab. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. We've already um, we've already said that we are not going to discuss every oh, okay. argument. So well, okay. we're we're gonna we're gonna concede that there was plagiarism. Um, mm -hmm. we're not gonna discuss every item that anybody's found. Okay, but maybe not everybody here knows what other are. I'm sorry, we're still not gonna discuss it. It's on the agenda. We are, we have okay. conceded that there is plagiarism. Okay. We're not going to discuss it. So here's the difference. The difference between plagiarism and copyright infringement is this. Plagiarism is handled by administration at school. Copyright infringement is handled by the court. The article that we see included in the November of 2012 was taken from tithealth.org website. And on the very first screen when you enter it, it says, Terms and policy of use. It goes on to say that in, there are very specific guidelines that you have to follow in order to reuse their artwork in print or online. Our copy of is distributed to over 2,500 households. So not only do we have an article that was popular, Um, by the beginning, it was going to ask for 2,500 different households. And it was posted online, which puts those two things right there, according to the United States Copyright and Infringement Law, not only put them to be a big financial risk for being sued, um, it puts a school at risk because that's our new club. And it can go all the way down to Mr. Darwin, the one that handles our technology because he's responsible for posting things online, and that is a crime, and it is an offense. And I just can't say you didn't know, because it's very, very clear on the website that you can't, what that is, five different criteria for reprinting the article on what you have to do. You can't edit the article, you can't post the article without hiding your website. Um, I'd be happy to tell you all the different things that are on here. And not only did you edit the article on Mr. McGee, but you posted it online and in the Falcon View, which it speaks vehemently that you're not allowed to publicate any of their articles without citing them. And if you 
will need to have a partial publication if you have to fight the regret of the article can be found. And that, you know, aside from everything else, is a big deal. Because that puts our school district at financial risk. Not just now, but in the future. Because these people, they may not know now, or they may know, but who knows, you know, they may come to you first, but then they're going to see who touched that article and who included that article in the top of you and how it was going to act. So that, the 2500 newsletter that went out, went out with 3400 voters in our community. So, you know, aside from being the partner, and don't get me wrong with me, I know we've got a lot of great things for our school. But sometimes, like we tell our kids, you know, you are, sometimes your mistakes um, are right off. You know, they're not fixable. Sometimes the consequences, just as if you brought a car, you're going to prison. It's not the same as if you deal with the gun from a grocery store. There are some things that don't have to do like that have hard consequences. And unfortunately, with these five years of active plagiarism, it's been over and over. And it's been between 2010 and 2012. So if you didn't come for the first time that they drive, they start running up like somebody else mentioned. There were many other articles and more, I mean, I can tell you right now if you wanted to see how many different people or websites have their material stolen from And it's their material. And we pay you a lot of money to be able to write these articles for us. We put our trust in you to protect our kids and to get, bring them the best class possible with that and other. And what this did for me was if you're going to do this, what else have you done? That's what really took back what I know my kids. You lose my trust and it's all gone. Like you gotta start over from zero. So now I don't believe anything you say. And that's how we bring up our kids. And so I'm not, I don't want to negate anything that you've ever done in the politics or school. I don't want you to think that. But this, these particular issues are lost. So um, I thank you for what you've done for our school. But unfortunately, to me, this overrides it. And, I, you know, that was a really hard thing for me to have to explain to my kids, especially the safety article. I mean, that is, wow, above and beyond that. Is, that hurt me, and it hurt my kids. So, um, that's all I have to say. And, you know, the National High School Federation, um, one of them, they were one of the people that were playing drive from, and we're members of their, their group, the National Federation for the High School Association. And, she and I are one of those articles. And so we're members of those groups. What are they going to think about? You know, the part of it, that's the way you really have to be. So that's, that's it. I guess that's all I'd like for you guys to consider. Thanks for your time. Um, before you start, I would like to ask how many more people are planning to speak? Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're going to have to hold that right out of your mouth. I'm Rob Morgan, and I want to thank the board and the administration and the teachers for coming in there and trying to keep this thing running with all the uh, outside pressure. Um, I got an opportunity here uh, last fall to work with John for five weeks. I filled in for super writer of maintenance. Um, I was impressed with the list that Vicky came up with. Um, I felt the same way. So I believe John's done an outstanding job at school. Um, I was really, really impressed. Uh, with all the maintenance here, um, he's on the leading edge of everything. Um, I, and today I've seen a lot of agendas up here, uh, different agendas. Um, I'm not so sure that they're all for teams, um, but uh, um, 
I really thought that this issue was already solved, and now I see that when I'm back in um, I, I really wish that this community could be passed and uh, uh, resolved and let this board do what it's supposed to be. Uh, at the end of the day, um, this is about kids. And get them educated and um, get them ready to take on the future. Um, I just, I hate to see this task over again. Uh, I think John did a great job. Made some mistakes, but I think it's time for this community to start healing and to move forward. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, we just got to keep these kids educated. That's it. I'm Alan Lyles, and um, I'm here because I feel pretty strongly that this is a matter. I have to pick it up. Not I feel pretty strongly that I'm uh, that, that what we have here is a matter of integrity and honesty. Um, it, it, I was like everyone here. I think willing to forgive and forget the first occurrence if that was the matter that Hank came up, whatever we call it. But when all these others came up, that's a real problem. I also have a problem that my kids, when I come here to school, I come here to school and pick up kids and do things at school. Um, my son, sorry. The, the superintendent has an active verb. Um, you know how I've heard children call it cop child and that they make eat a paper. That is a sad fact. You, you can say everything you want, and it is about it. And if our kids challenge the integrity of our superintendent, let's talk. I think the fact that the superintendent didn't come fully clear and disclose all the problems that occurred is a problem. It's an integrity and honesty problem. I feel for you guys because you thought this matter was behind you and it, it extended its contract. It's a discussion for the board because they, at least what I understand, is that you thought this matter was solved and was a flawed occurrence. I'm going to just insert one thing here. Um, anybody who knows how the school runs knows that anyone who's hired here is hired during a public meeting. And so people, those of you who are following the minutes of the meeting in the minute manner that lots of people do, should be able to discern that Mr. Redeem has not been offered a contract of any kind at this point. So I want to put the stop to that falsehood that is being perpetuated in the media and in the community that he's been given a contract renewal. That is not the case. So I want that to stop now. Okay? I'm sorry, no. Well, Mr. Lyle still has the floor. Well, let me, so let me say, first off, I deeply apologize. I don't follow the minutes as closely as I guess I should. It was not where I, I wasn't trying to propagate a falsehood or anything else. You're just giving me a chance to say that what needed to be said. Okay, well, thank, thank you. you. Um, I'm a little off track. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> a little nervous here. Uh, but again, it's about honesty. And if that's the case, then great. It's a great opportunity for you to address this. It's a sad fact that at least I uh, given the impression that this was a, a resolved issue with a one and done type of thing. And it's been brought this more. I think it's a sad fact. The students are laughing, joking amongst each other about this. That's a terrible fact. I think it's a sad fact that we have to be on TV in the TV chair. I think it's a sad fact that other districts are looking at this. It's a terrible state. 
And for me, it all comes down to one thing. Honesty and disclosure. And I have a, like others here, I have a serious lack of distrust when someone is not fully transparent and forthcoming when they've made a mistake. It's like, I got my hands in the cookie jar and I caught one. But I'm not going to say about all those other things that I've done. I have a problem with that. I hope you do too. Um, because like many others here, I think the superintendent's done a good job. The deeds don't override honesty and integrity. And I hope you weigh that in this difficult decision that's before you. And then I hope, whatever you do, they lay out a complete plan of disclosure and um, transparency to help bring this community together because we are sadly fractured. I don't have an agenda. I'm not part of any agenda. I was afraid to speak because I thought it would be aligned with an agenda. <laughs> I think there's many people who are like that. And I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that in our community. This is about kids, it's about kids and coming together. And I think you as a board need to help us find that um, community again. Because I'm proud to live in Florence, and I'm proud to have my kids in Florence. And I want to continue to feel proud. Right now, I'm not so proud with um, the administration. This lack of honor, uh, honesty, and integrity really has affected me. Thank you, that's all I have to say. I've been around here for a while. I've been involved in quite a few things that have to do with this whole town, from baseball to the schools to just about everything. And I've seen a lot of people come and go in this area. I've seen a lot of people come and go on this board. I spent a little time with some of the people on this board. I don't want to use this decision here. But, uh, that's kind of what I'm standing for. I, I want to see you make a decision. I've watched you cover things up. I've seen you push things aside. I've seen you hold kids' feet to the fire over a small infraction. You're real tough on kids when it comes down to it. You always have to set an example for the kids. I've watched you do it. I've heard you say the word. And now I'm hearing you say, they back off to them because they're punishing or disciplining an adult. Somebody that, yes, he does find them off. I don't know very well. I've been following him in numerous projects. Um, I'm very surprised at what's happened here. John and I are friends and what we may have done. I'm very disappointed in what he's done. Uh, I, I think the example that he has set is <laughs> unfortunate. It's something that this, this is an event in academic circles is that only physically or sexually abusing child. This is a huge thing. If the kid does this in college, they're kicked out of year. If the kid does it in high school, they're kicked out of class, they fail the class. There are consequences. There are um, you have to be held accountable for what you do in my job. And I don't know why schools are any different than anyone else. When I cross the line, when I do something wrong, and I have made money in the face, and everybody in this room has made the same. That's not, that's not the point. The point is, <clears throat> you know when you cross the line, and he's done it numerous times. It's not the first time, it's probably not going to be the last time. He just happened to be caught, and it was the the example that I read about was for basic. The other guys are there was, I mean every word was exact. And he put his name on. And then he blamed it on the secretary. I heard him I heard him blame the secretary for probably five things that should have been done, didn't get done, and just it, it ended up being the secretary's fault. I don't believe that anymore. And I have an advantage over the other people because I've been around him a lot, and I do 
I've been around the board a lot. Uh, I'm not very, I really don't uh, envy your experience. Because if you don't play the right one, you're going to get blamed. And either way you go, it's going to be wrong for some of them. But the point I'm trying to make is, if I make a mistake, if I step across that line in my line of work or in any line of work, I know I'm done. I know I'm done. And I know if a kid had done this and he was standing before you right now, your policy would be to hold his feet to the fire, and that's exactly what you do. Once the kid is done, you can go and get kind of a shot. So, I think it's kind of you stood up and made an example. I've heard that comment from almost everybody in this, at that table. It's time to make an example. Well, it is time to make an example. And it's time for somebody to stand up and show them some integrity and all. And I'm sorry for what happened, I don't like it. Nobody can like it. Nobody wants to be with that. But it's time for somebody who did it. When you make a mistake, you should be held accountable. And the kids need to learn that. And what better time to do that? Or what better time to show that than that? Thank you. Uh, this is just to address your comment that you made about the rumors about me being this contract. I want to let you know that in the in the in the I'm um, sorry, um, you were already had a chance to come up and speak. Um, right? Yes. And so I was supposed to force you, I believe. No, you no, know, I had not. Well, I know that you said that it was a rumor. I called the district on February 8th at 2.42 p.m. Uh, and I was told by Jeannie Morgan. She apologized to me because she did not have McGee's current contract that was voted and he, his contract was renewed on January 23rd. I'm asking you how... Misunderstood question. This was difficult to the handwriting, submittal... Um, right. Requirements. But I had asked... I, you apologized to me vehemently several times that the board had to forward it. I don't want to sign an affidavit, okay? I had the phone, I had the phone call and everything done. I, I was told that on the 23rd meeting that his contract was renewed. You apologized and you even used the verb that you, you apologized in your act on the contract because the board had followed it to you. I'm just sure. asking, I'm sorry. How does that happen? I'm just asking you now, okay? Okay, all right. Ms. Morgan gave you incorrect information. Okay. She knows now that she gave you incorrect information. So we are, going to, we are not going to continue that the, that the contract has been reduced. It has not been reduced. Okay. She gave you incorrect information for not completely understanding what your question is. Her question was at that time. I didn't so know what her. I didn't know what you now. And everybody, everybody knows that if you need information from the district office, you need to submit your questions in writing so that everyone can be sure that we understand what your question is and that no one can call up and just blindside somebody who ever answers the phone. We need to know exactly what your question is. I asked so them to do that. Maybe you are going to, we're not going to talk about that. I'm thank, thank you for letting us know that you were the one who called. Right. Thank you very much. Well, I didn't have anything to hide, so I didn't. No, that's why I have to let somebody know. That's fine. I uh, know what, I, we're not going to talk about it. Maybe incorrect information that you were given and we were sorry that that happened. Okay. Hi, I'm Kelly Michael Director. And I don't have a lot to say. I just would like to say that I agree with the young girl that came up and spoke. Um, I probably didn't think she spoke for a lot of students. I agree with the young man and everything he had to say. Alan Lyle, it is about the students. About leadership. Um, I'm very disappointed in him be one time okay, more than one time not okay. I can tell by the look on Mr. Cornish, Mr. Grove, the United States, that you've already made a decision, and that saddens me. Um, 
um, hold on one sec. Uh, in Flash, I think that, um, can you hear me? We need to put your tree up now. Um, I think that the two week um, administrative leave um, unpaid is um, should be the final um, part of the discipline action for this particular event. I, I like the way that you have it. This happens again. That it will be, um, in my mind, the happens again. It will be grounds for termination. Um, I don't expect that that's going to be the case, but I'm, I'm glad that that's in my um, And the date, not that you have what date is going to be looking out for that. May I ask a question about the other days? Hold on to the other days. We'll get to the other days. Okay. Uh, the total date for the unpaid suspension would be March 25th uh, through uh, April 5th. Again, that would be for an unpaid suspension. Yeah. Administrators don't get spring break, they work through spring break. That's judged to the office people. Are you going to allow discussion from Okay, so we are uh, we are in discussion and uh, we have to call the members to join the discussion. I'm going to let it go into two minutes per person. The only addition that I would make is an opportunity to consider. In our family, we like to see that when an error is made, that there is uh, progress that uh, there are recommendations to help a person grow in the area that they faltered in. And so I would make a recommendation that instead of um, Mr. McGee's voluntary inclusion in the Falcon Field, that he be required by this board to write every month an article to be published in the Falcon View, and that that article and Mr. McGee's inclusion of that material be reviewed by one of our fine English teachers here at the school. I think it's important if you're going to discipline, and I agree with the discipline. I, I think a two-week suspension without pay is probably a good idea. But I think you need also to add an element that says, this is what we're going to do to try to help Mr. McGee further. That's what we do to people we care about. The weight of this thing has got to be huge on Mr. McGee, and, and it should be. But I think we also need to make, make the next step to help him become a better person, a better administrator, and to move forward in his life as a leader for our school. All right, thank you for that suggestion. And that's what we're doing right now is talking about the, uh, the specific uh, letter that will be drafted uh, and uh, signed off by the appropriate people and placed in the CV employment file. So that's what we're talking about right now, our suggestions for this particular recommended letter. Uh, can you come back to the voting and talk to the microphone? So I just have a couple questions. I, I guess I, I just have a couple questions. Um, does the suspension, similar to suspension record, does that uh, qualify for renewal contract? Or is that a, does that stand in the way for a renewal contract? It would be something to be considered. I can't say it says really at this moment. It would be something to be considered. I, I would just encourage you to not let this become a referendum on the board. This issue. I, I think you need to hold the mic so try I would encourage you not to let this action or inaction, what level would you take, um, become a referendum on the board performance on whitewashing or what some people would say whitewashing or endorsing um, or um, abstaining or overlooking integrity and honesty issues. Um, I don't know what the right answer is, 
because it's a fine line, and it would be very easy, one way or another, to have a referendum on the board. And I said, and I really wouldn't want that to happen. So I would just encourage you to look at this because I think that the failure of the highest level, and I don't see how we can continue with such a lack of integrity or honesty in that position and everything else. I don't know what you do with that. But that's, that's my personal opinion, and I bet it's the opinion of a lot of people here as well. Thank you. My name is B.J. Ballister, and um, I'm very again. B.J. Ballister. Okay, thanks. I'm very disappointed with what your decision was made tonight, because as parents, we have a duty to our kids to raise them in our belief system and more of a plan. He was a place of leadership, and he did some great things, but he didn't do those things on the ball. We have some awesome teachers who do those great things. He's just a leader. He's an example for our kids. Now I have to go home and explain to my kids why a leader can do something like that repeatedly and it's okay. But when I have to discipline my kids at home and there's consequences, how do we explain that? I went to this school nine years ago because I don't want to get my kids in a school system that was trustworthy, away from the big city, that kind of thing. And I'm just thinking that morally we have just set an example that has diminished. And not only kids go back to school, you don't have a, a standing, I don't believe, because they feel like I'm going to get my hands up and I can go do it again. He's repeated this again several times. And my question is, after these two weeks, if an old situation comes up that surfaces, is that going to change the game? Does that mean he's out of it? Or is it because it was an old one, it's okay? Thank you. Um, the only thing that I would recommend with this decision is that, and this has been my criticism of the board, and I've talked to many of you, I've talked to all of you now, I think your biggest criticism is that you're not very great communicators. As you can hear, in this information age, we've got really communicators out here. Look at the Falcon Review, look at, you know, all of these. Uh, when I heard from the last person that there weren't consequences, there weren't consequences that she could agree to, right? But I think it's really important for our community to know that there are consequences to this, and that it be very clear to the community, and that it not just be in the newspaper. I think you guys need to really look at how you communicate and you need to be as the leader of the school, how you communicate and not be as dependent as you are on the Falcon view. I just think that um, there will be misinformation. You've already heard it. People don't agree, so they consider it non consequential right? We're not all going to agree on that. But get your information out there so people understand what your decision was. Thanks. Sure. Is it going to be in this file that he stated he is it after he was found out? Is that going to be in this file? Not that he came forward, but after he was found out, he admitted he did. Is that going to be in the file? We uh, we need to discuss the content of the letter and the final letter will then become part of the public record. Uh, I can't say at this point, but uh, Barbara is definitely going to be there. Uh, but 
This is your chance to make suggestions. So, thank you. And may I ask one more question? Sure. How does this contract come up for review or to renew? It's contract expired at the end of this school year. I'm sure all of this 
will be a huge consequence, there's no doubt. Termination is a consequence. Lots of times people make big mistakes, read the paper, administrative fees. In your mind, you might have felt that they need to be terminated. You might have felt something completely different. But honestly, as a community, please got to get together because of this is what you need because of this or something else. I am not going to grab the point to be greener as far as what somebody that leaves our school and does I mean they positive change to the school. So something I know from board I you're in a tough situation. Thank you. My name is Tony Berry. I would like to thank, say thank you to Melvin Berry for his character and integrity. Uh, I don't think this, if this is a suit in this position. I don't think the rest of the board would treat this with me as they would treat a suit. It's not fair. Thank you, Tom. Okay, does anyone else have anything about the motion that's on the table of developing this letter of reprimand? I need, I need, I'm sorry, I need to come back to people who are here. So I have to say one more thing that I understand what you're saying. I don't agree with you either, but this is an understand what you're saying, I don't agree with you either. But that's not what we're talking about in here. And I don't believe, and I sat over there and talked about this before, and I just want to say this, I do not believe a suspension will allow Mr. McGee to buy his office back. And that's what I see it happening. He's paying a fee, and now we're going to forgive him if he will be honest and forthright going forward. I don't see that. I have a real problem with that. I don't have an agenda. I just want someone in this position that we can all stand up, get behind as a community, and move forward with. I think that this is attached to him, this plagiarism, he will never live it down, it will go with him, and I wish him well wherever he goes, but I wish he could go somewhere else. Thank you. All right, I'm going to call for a question on the motion. All those in favor of the motion of this letter of reprimand that we um, are going to develop, and that, by the way, will be written by myself. Um, and as I say, the proper signatures will be, uh, the board will review it, and the proper signatures will be obtained, uh, and it will become a matter of public record at, a, at the April meeting. So anyone who would like to request a copy of that will be able to do so at that time. Uh, but we are going to vote on the um, on the uh, gist of the letter of recommend right now, and then we are going to be at the end of this agenda item. So we are voting for the letter of recommend. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? All right. So the motion for the letter of recommend has passed. And we are going to go on to the next item of business, which is to hire a wrestling coach. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce Jamie Muir. Uh, Jamie is here tonight. We got a very good seat in our head. Wrestling ball to position. We have two applicants that are part of the position. Interview ball. Uh, Jamie comes to us with really solid credentials in terms of experience as a wrestler and uh, coaching in the wrestling. Uh, he is assisted at the collegiate level as a wrestling coach. And so, without him, uh, with a strong recommendation, we encourage the board to hire Jamie to take on the wrestling ball. Oh, I'm sorry. 